of a narcissistic parent, you were being blamed for things that you did or didn't do. And maybe one of your siblings was the golden child and you were the scapegoat and you could do no right. Even though you were doing right, you weren't being given credit for it. And the other person, let's say the golden child, had no boundaries and they could do whatever they wanted to and they would laugh in your face and take advantage of you. And eventually your, your parent, who was the narcissist and the golden child would team up on you, team up against you. And they would continue to do this until you got the message, until you got the wisdom that they in fact are incapable of change. They won't change. They can't change. They are two peas in a pod. They are the same dark energy force. It's just that one is decades older. This is the narcissistic abusive cycle. It goes around and around and around. And you must remove yourself from this cycle whenever possible. And that is why perhaps you found a needle in a haystack. You found the wisdom. You typed into the search engine or the browser or YouTube something like a spouse won't talk to me or rage fits or gaslighting. And then one video or one article led to another, which led to another and then ding, ding, ding. You found a checklist of toxic behaviors and the person you are thinking of or the person you are in the relationship with, they're checking all the boxes. And this was very frightening because now you had become introduced to something that the narcissist never thought you would be introduced to, which is the education and the wisdom on the narcissistic abusive cycle. The cycle goes around and around and there is one constant in the cycle and it is the narcissist. It is not you. It is not their friends, their colleagues, their job. It's none of those things. It's one person. Because one person, when you were in the relationship with them, was trying to tear you down. They were trying to pepper you with abuse. They were trying to have you not believe in yourself. They were trying to gaslight you, stonewall you. They were trying to throw rage fits on you. And they were verbally abusing you, mentally abusing you, spiritually abusing you, financially abusing you, at times physically abusing you. And they did not ever think you would figure them out. They did not ever think you would heal. They did not ever think you would be strong enough to put yourself back together. But that is what you are doing or you have done. That is why you are on the healing path, headed towards the pinnacle of indifference, headed towards indifference, not carrying a grudge, not blaming others, understanding that that relationship is something you had to go through. Now, did you want to go through it? Did you want to experience the toxicity of the narcissistic relationship? Of course you didn't, I didn't either but it's something you had to go through. You needed to experience that relationship. If not with that person, it would have been with another person coming at you in a different form. Now, having said all these things, it leads up to the, there is a day in your life or there was a day in your life when all of these behaviors add up and it is when the relationship comes crumbling down. This is a day that perhaps you figured out finally, oh my gosh, my spouse is a toxic narcissistic person or this is the day that someone introduced you to a video, or this is the day the narcissist threw one rage fit too many for you and you left, or this is the chances went to zero, or you lost your job, or you couldn't pay the mortgage, or any of those things, that's when they disappeared. That's when they went on to the new supply. Not all the time, but usually. Now, having said these things, you made a pivotal decision in your life to research terms and to figure out what you were up against, and lo and behold, you discovered what narcissism was or toxic behavior, whatever you wanna call it. The point being there is when you figured it out, you probably dropped down to your knees or maybe curled up in a ball and wailed and cried and screamed and was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This, this is verifying everything that I thought. All these boxes are being checked off, check, 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 because all this poor behavior like triangulation or blame shifting or mirroring or the smear campaign or stonewalling, all of these things you experienced, you just didn't know what they were because you weren't taught this in school and you were isolated in your own home, you lost your identity. And the decisions you were making back then when you were in the relationship were to benefit the, the relationship and the narcissist, to keep peace in the family, to keep peace in the house. So you did not ever, once you realized that it was easier for you to be quiet, meaning if you voiced your opinion or stood up for yourself or put a boundary in place, again, the narcissist would say, what's your problem? You're so weak. You're lame. Go get help. You need a therapist. I should have never married you. There are so many other people that want to be with me. What's your problem? Have thicker skin. The only person I have problems with is you. They would say things like that. So you get so beaten down. You realize when they ask you what restaurant you want to go to, you have two choices. Very simple. Either A, you tell them where you want to go. And let's say that they, they say, no, I don't want to go there. Then you're like deflated. And you're like, really? Again? Or they do go, and then they tell you that that restaurant was no good, the food wasn't good, the wait staff was horrible, they had to wait too long, the soup was cold, there were only two ice cubes in the water, not three. 
So then what do you do? The other option is you be quiet and you say, hey, you can pick the restaurant, it's up to you. And then what happens? Then they say, well, you can never make a decision. What's your problem? I just gave you a perfect opportunity. You could pick whatever restaurant you wanted to. Why didn't you do it? You don't have a backbone, you're so weak. And then what would they do? They would pick the restaurant. And guess what? You would be sitting there right across the dinner table from them when they're on one of their three smartphones and they're triangulating you with the wait staff and you're scratching your head looking around the room saying, why are all these other couples titled to better than this? You need to step up your efforts to supply me. Another reason is because they are getting supply simply by playing the victim, getting sympathy from whoever doesn't know what's really going on. Number four, you're crazy or you're always imagining things. Calling you crazy or some variation thereof um, directly to your face or to others is a very common tactic used by narcissistic partners. In reality, she doesn't believe that you're truly crazy, at least not yet, but she's planting that seed of doubt in your mind and in the minds of those around you so that you will start to question your sanity. And if you go to someone for support, their perception of you is already tainted in a negative way. The female covert narcissist also loves to gaslight you, make you believe that you are in fact losing your mind and shouldn't trust your own perceptions, memories, senses, and so on. And they do this to control and dominate you by making you more reliant on them to interpret reality for you. So they get to control the narrative of what happened and what didn't happen. And for more on gaslighting, just click on the link above. The gist is that they make you and everyone around you um, think that you're going crazy so that they can avoid detection and avoid taking responsibility, making you look like you're the problem and the cause of all the issues in the relationship. Number five, I don't have time for this. Translation, whatever's important to you doesn't matter to me and you can forget about me spending my precious time and energy on something that matters to you. Number six, I didn't say that. You're always putting words in my mouth. Or that's not what I meant. Now, it is possible on occasion that a partner truly doesn't remember saying something. But if this is happening regularly, it is more likely a tactic to avoid taking responsibility. You aren't in her position. You know, self-reflection can be so useful for everyone. What's tricky is, the, is what her experiences are. I mean, I try to maintain contact. She, uh, she shut that down. The longer this went on, the more real it began to feel. And there was just this cauldron of emotions, horrible emotions, shock and shame, anger, denial, sadness, depression, betrayal. It was so hard to process. Her experiences could have been you know, sleepless nights because she felt so guilty when she had memories of some of the ways in which she treated her daughter, for example. Around this time, we discovered her TikTok, which I have to confess was strange and difficult to digest because she does a lot of exotic cosplay. We have been replaced by fans. Scanned a couple of chapters out of order, including the amends letter section which I could not stomach because it required far too much contrition. Like, it's all the parents' fault. I brought the Coleman book with me on this adventure, but I didn't read it. I was still low-level bitter and resentful over being ghosted. It could have been sleepless nights because she's so worried about how her daughter's doing, you know, and, and she doesn't know if, if her daughter's gonna be okay. She knows her daughter's really hurting so much that she's had to cut off from her. And she doesn't know how she's been doing since then. And, you know, she doesn't mention any of that in the video. She only talks about how she feels a victim. So I was grieving for dad that winter, but also for Haley, who didn't seem to care. This is arguably one of the most traumatic, horrifying thing that a parent can ever endure. From Diane's point of view, there are so many comments that she later attributes in another video to the younger generation. And I think that's important given that we later find out that she thinks